Hello there. Happy Wednesday evening, June 29th, officially two weeks away from the start of NHL free agency. We've already seen some action around the NHL. Kevin Fiala being traded from Minnesota to Los Angeles. And I'll get to that a little later on. Just a quick little thought on that trade. Um, the draft is next week. But I will have a couple targets that you all should be you know, keeping in mind for next week if the Penguins do indeed keep their first round pick. Uh, I haven't put together my full, you know, I guess big board yet. You know, me and Jason are still working on a little bit, but you know, I, I do have a couple of names that I can share with you all that, you know, I, I think could be in play at 21. That would be a good pick for the Penguins. And we'll also get to Brian Burke's comments, Dave Molinari today. He get offered up some updates on the Chris and saying end up getting Malkin um, discussions and I'll give my analysis and, or just my thoughts on those. And we'll also get to Redeem Zohorna's season review. So that will be, Today's episode of Locked on Penguins podcast. It's all coming up right after this drop. Your Locked on Penguins. Your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. Um, so let's start out with the comments um, from Brian Burke. So he spoke uh, to Dave Molinari of Pittsburgh Hockey Now. If I can go up here and then find the comments uh, really quickly. Um uh, Burks. So this, this this is the first time I think Burke has spoken all offseason. I'm glad that you know Dave was able to do some good work here, uh, speak to Burke. And Brian said to him, we have to figure out what Chris wants to do, what Gino wants to do. Once we determine that, all the other pieces will fall into place. Right now, we are waiting on those two. That said, it might not be the case much longer. Um, you know, that's just typical GM speak. Um, you know, he's not going to really t- tip the scales or – well, He's basically putting it in the player's court. You know, this is how it goes. You know, I'm sure if, if you ask Chris Tang or getting Malkin's agents, you know, they would say, you know, oh, we're, we're waiting for the other side to maybe give us an offer that we want to accept. It's it, that's just that that's how you know these executives and these agents speak. I've been seeing this far too often over the years, and you know, for, as for the case being the case much longer, I mean, there's two weeks to go until free agency opens, so they're going to have to know sooner rather than later. Um, and speaking of that, Brian Burke said, I don't think a hard deadline would be productive to say right now, but yes, at some point one will get kick in. So I'm sure many of you all ask me, well, what's that deadline? And my guess day before free agency, you know, the day of like, maybe like that morning, cause usually free agency opens at what noon or one o'clock or something like that. So they, they probably would want to know by then, like, Hey, you know, this is kind of our final take it or leave it off or, uh, if you're not going to take it, you know, we're going to, you know, explore other trades, like, you know, maybe for like a Jacob Trickman for Latang or, you know, by God, God for, you know, Vincent Trocek or something like that to replace a Gunny Malkin. Um, I think that would have to be the hard deadline. I don't think it's next week or anything like that. Um, but I do think it's the week after either the day before free agency starts or um, the day of. And this was another big one from uh, Dave Story. Um, Burke said, so Dave, Dave obviously said the Penguins have about 23 million in cash space available. Burke said it is a very real possibility that there will be trades to open up additional space, but we're not there yet. So what that tells me is that they don't want to trade anyone right now unless they really have to. Um, I think if they have to bend to the player side, I think that will have them potentially open up some more space. Um, I don't think it's going to be, you know, what the wild would have had to do to keep Kevin Fiala today. Um, I think Billy, Billy Garen spoke to the media and said that they would have had to trade two or three players just to sign him. So in the Penguins case here, you know, they would really only have to trade maybe one, but they can also just bring both of them back um, and still have at least a little bit of room to make some changes to the other parts of the roster. I think that point is definitely being missed among some fans. Um, there's, there's nothing, there's, What's the, how am I, how do I want to say this? You know, there's no rule that, oh, well, if you, if you want to make meaningful changes, you, you, 
I'm like screwing this up so badly. Um, there's no rule that says you can't make meaningful changes if you bring both of those back. That that's what I wanted to say. Um, I, I, some fans think that there is for some reason, but there's not. They have the cap space to bring both of them back right now as it stands. If you want to open up a little bit more, sure, that would be really nice. Again, I've talked about that numerous times on this podcast. Brian Dumoulin, his $4 million uh, cap it could be gone. If you want to trade Marcus Pedersen, which I advise against in my opinion, um, even though I would understand <clears throat> why they would trade him, you can do that. You can potentially trade Brock McGinn, open up almost $3 million there. You know, th- th- there are options for the Penguins here. Um, and you know, for those that you know, that are maybe going to come back and say, well, you know, you can't bank on that. I mean, you know, G- GMs help other GMs all the time. I mean, <clears throat> you know, for as good as Joe Sackick was, you know, he, he ended up signing Jack Johnson and obviously congratulations to him. He helped them win the Stanley cup, but you know, <clears throat> not everyone is perfect. I mean, Chris Drury went out and signed Barkley Godot to that insane six year term. Jim Rutherford went out and signed a Brandon Tano to do a six year term before he went uh, off to the, the Seattle Kraken when he was picked last summer. T- General managers love those kind of bottom six boards. I really do think if the Penguins were willing to shop someone like McGinn, I don't think they will because I think Hextall likes him and it's only been a year on his contract. I do think there would be takers out there, just like I do think there will be a taker out there for someone like Brian Dumont. So I am glad <clears throat> that Burke said that, you know, they're open to um, creating more cap space. And, you know, again, I know they're not there yet. They want to be able to do this, I think, without having to take um, anyone off the team to do it. But, you know, if it comes to that, um, I really don't think they should be hesitant to pull the trigger on a trade to keep both players here. I mean, at the end of the day, these are your franchise icons. They're still elite players. If I have to lose, you know, one of those three players that I mentioned to put them um, under my cap, um, I am doing it every single day of the week. Um, I'm not even... It's, it's honestly, I mean, it's, it's not even a, dis- it's not even a discussion. Um, you know, another quote that I did see, um, you know, Burke did say, you know, we should know, I, I'm guessing in the next little bit, um, we've made determined efforts to meet with and assign Chris Tang. It's been a little less determined with Malkin only because we have to know how much money we have to work with and we have to put this jigsaw puzzle together. So we've had direct discussions with the agent for Malkin, which I believe is J.P. Berry, but they're less intense. And, you know, this all goes to show at least for me, that let's hang is the higher priority. And it, the right to prioritize him. He is the higher cap hit. He, I think, is the better player. I, I, I hate comparing them because, you know, they're two different positions that you can't even really compare how they play. But, you know, in terms of how good they are at their respective positions, Chris Tang is a better defenseman than Evgeny Malkin is, you know, at forward in terms of like a league-wide basis. And if you look at the free agent market for defensemen outside of John Klingberg, where and there's no guarantee the Penguins will sign him, there is absolutely nothing there. So the Penguins are right to prioritize Latang, and I am glad that they are having you know some big time discussions with Latang again. Someone's going to have to bend here. Two signs may have to bend to make this work, but I'm not surprised in the slightest that Latang is getting the priority. He says, there's also got to be some sequence here. One has to sign and then the other, or maybe neither of them will, but it's coming to a head soon. So it sounds like, again, just based off what I read there, they want to get a deal done with one of them and then they want to see what happens with the other one. If I had to guess, Latang would be the one that goes first. Then they can really circle back to Malkin and get that negotiation underway. But, you know, time really is running short here. There's two weeks left until free agency opens. Uh, Ron Hextall and Brian Burke really do not have any time right now um, to screw around. Um, at, at least that's just how I see it. So um, I'm glad Brian Burke was able to speak to the media today. Um, but o- overall, I mean, this is this is typical GM executive speak. They, they, they're not going to negotiate through the media. They're obviously going to say that, you know, it's in the player's court and all that. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, they, they're, they're hoping they can, you know, potentially get team-friendly deals for both and bring back, um, the two players so that they can retire as members of the Pittsburgh Penguins organization. So um, those are my thoughts on um, Burke's comments about Latang and Malkin. I mean, I, I got to admit to you all, uh, I, I, it's been about what month and a half now since the Penguins got eliminated. I'm definitely getting a little tired of having the same discussion about these two players over and over again. I, I will celebrate 
definitely if they sign, obviously, because I won't have to talk about it anymore. But a small part of me will also celebrate that I'll have to, I'll, I get to stop talking about it if one or both of them walk away because it is just, it is a, my, my mind just goes in so many different directions um, when it comes to discussing these two players. And yeah, I, I would love to discuss other things uh, surrounding the team for, you know, at least, a, you know, an, an episode where I, again, where I, I just, I don't focus on them at all. And I feel like that's just been very rare um, this off season, but you know, when, when you have two of your best players of all time up for new contracts, you know, that that's going to be, that's going to dictate what you're going to talk about a lot. Um, coming up in the next segment, we're going to get to redeem the Hornets season review. What I liked about him. Um, if he can potentially be up here full time next year. But before I get to that, betonline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest developments, league reviews and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball scores. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. You can head to the website or use your phone to learn more about the trends in action. That has been online where the game starts. All right, I'm back here on this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. So let's get to one of the final um, forwards that was really up here um, from Wilkesbury during the season. That actually got some decent time. From Wilkesbury, outside of Drew O'Connor, uh, it was Redeem the Horn that got the most games um, from Wilkesbury. So, um, had two goals, six points in seventeen games, at five v five per natural stat trick. Totally fine numbers um, for a, a third or fourth liner, mostly a fourth liner. When he was on the ice, the Penguins had fifty seven percent of the shot attempts. <laughs> they had ninety two percent of the actual goals at five v five. No, I am not joking. Thirteen goals for, one goal against for his career. A 25-game sample size, the Penguins have 20 of the actual goals for and only three goals against. I don't know if that's going to stay that way if he's a full-time NHLer next year, but that's a very good start to his NHL career. He is very defensively responsible, um, and you know, I think that's definitely played a role with how much the coaching staff likes him. Penguins, when he when he was on the ice, they had 57% of the expected goals, 60% of the scoring chances, 59% of the high-danger chances, eight high-danger goals for... No high danger goals against. These are elite numbers for a bottom sixer in the NHL. And I again, I know it's only 17 games. Those numbers will not stay the same for an entire regular season. But damn, th- those are very, very solid numbers. I-, I just said I like him defensively. He also has that very long frame. He's a big body, has a heck of a release on that shot. Yeah, he's he's the perfect, you know, bottom sixer, I think, for this team, especially, you know, with the size he has, again, the shot, um, the reach that he has to break up plays. Um, his skating is not bad at all, especially for someone who is it looks like he's almost seven feet on the ice. And you know, going into this year, I think some people forget this. This is a one-way contract for him. Remember when the Penguins signed him, I want to say it was last offseason. It was a two-way contract for this past season and a one-way deal for the 2022-2023 season. So I think the Penguins are expecting him to come up from Wilkesbury, make the leap full-time, and to contribute on a nightly basis for this team. I think he's going to be given every opportunity in training camp to make this team. In 25 games that I've seen from him so far, I'm intrigued by this player. I want to see more from him. 17 games a season, I don't think was enough. I even think the eight games that we saw last season from him when he had two goals in those games, th- three p- total points, you know, I don't think you know, that was enough either. And, you know, Some of his numbers, a little bit down, 50% of the shot attempts, but you know, 70 to 70%, 77% of the actual goals for, 51% of the scoring chances, you know, 71% of the high danger uh, goals for, you know, some really elite ones, so some that are a little bit down. But, you know, if you can stick him on the fourth line with, you know, Teddy Bluger, who I think could use a nice bounce back here, I think he could actually really help Bluger bounce back. And, you know, maybe you put Begin on there if he's still on the team or, you know, some, or you sign someone else in free agency to come on uh, to that line on, on a cheap deal. You know, I think the Penguins will be having something there. You know, I, I said it earlier this week, and I'll repeat this now. 
I do think that it is a very distinct possibility that both O'Connor and Zohorna are on this team next year. I think they are the two um, biggest forwards that are NHL ready at this point. You know, could you make a case for, for, for Valtteri Pustin? Sure, and I'll get to you know a little season review for him um, at some point down the line. But you know, outside of these main two, especially you know Zohorna, who is the topic of discussion right now, you know, I don't think there is really anyone else down there that is NHL ready. And again, I, again, I'll, I'll preface this. You know, you can make the argument that Pustin is. I still think he needs a little more time down in Wilkes Barre, but you can certainly make that argument. I'm just saying my opinion. I think it's those two um, <clears throat> and everyone else at this point. You can put Zohorna, I think, on the penalty kill. His long reach would be a great asset there. He's shown an ability to block shots at the NHL level. He's a threat to score shorthanded, especially with the shot that he has. He's also pretty quick to lose pucks. Um, I think that would make a lot of sense for me, in my opinion. So I was really pleased with how he played last season. I, I'm really curious. He's one of the guys I'm going to look to see how he does in training camp. You know, I thought he had a good camp last year. was one of the final cuts um, before the regular season started. You know, can he build off that? And can he build off, you know, um, a pretty d- decent season? And looks very, as I look up the um, – as I'm looking to see how he – um finished here for the season. And, you know, honestly, I should throw Alex Nylander in there. I think he's pretty close to being ready to go back up in the NHL. He had 22 goals, 42 points this past season um, in total. Uh, But if I go down to um, Redeems of Hornet here, yeah, 12 goals, 21 points in 39 games. Um, No, that's solid numbers. Um, One of the only, one of the few double-digit scores um, for that team. So I'm excited by him, you know, Big Z, as all the fans here call him. I I, I do think he's going to really make a push for a roster spot. And I, I'm telling you all right now, don't be surprised if he's on this opening night roster and that he stays up here for the entire year, especially with that one-way contract. So that'll do it for this segment of the Locked on Penguins on podcast. Coming up in the second segment, I am going to get to a couple of – Players that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of keeping my eye on for the Penguins um, at number 21. So that's all coming up right after this commercial break. All right, I'm back here on this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. You want to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow this show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. So let's take a look at some of the players that I'm keeping my eye on. I definitely, one of them is Brad Lambert. Um, I know a lot of my mutuals have been damning me about him saying that, you know, he'd be a good pick at 21. You can coach him up and stuff. But, you know, if you go to hockey, you know, prospecting and you, and you look at the full comps for him, you know, it's it's definitely not as good. You know, and this is not the end all be all. You know, they've they've had plenty of their misses, but the full comps for Brad Lambert, who I think is probably going to be in play here at uh, 21. And for those that don't know, he is, you know, he can play center or right wing full comps, Scotty Walker, um, Chris Porter, Sandy McCarthy. A lot of these players are just, you know, basically just bottom sixers, um, in the NHL. That said, I am still, you know, looking at him because I I really do think, you know, he, he seems like that typical Ron Hextall, Brian Burke pick, you know, with, with the truculence that I'm sure he could provide. And, you know, they they love their bottom six forwards. Um, you know, I think um, Tristan Luno, I think he's a potential pick for the Penguins um, at 21, though. Um, I, I, on, I think he, you know, most like projections that I've seen from him have him sliding to the second round. I think a lot of them really don't see him as a first rounder. Um, and again, you know, I am the furthest thing from a draft that's where, you know, I, I'm on hockey prospectus all the time and, you know, hockey prospects and, and you know, elite prospects and all those other sites um, looking at these scouting reports and, you know, me and Jason are looking at some of the videotape to see, you know, who could be, you know, realistic for the Penguins and, you know, some of these players definitely are, but, you know, the last two that I've definitely mentioned, um, not, not the best ones um, uh, to say the least. Um, but in terms of some that I really do like at 21, this is this is this is a good one here. Um, Daniela Yurov out of Russia, the full comps from him, 
Alex DeBrincat, Neil Yakupov, Mike Bossy, even Matthew Kachuk. Um, he is one of my top players that if he's available there for the Penguins, you take him and run with it. Um, uh, there's no guarantee um, that he is going to be there, but if he is, the Penguins should take him and run with it. He's a great right winger. You know, he's put up really good production um, in his junior leagues. And the other one that I'll leave you all with this, Lane Hudson, defenseman out of the United States, um, full comps for him. Zach Bogosian, Ryan Ellis, Quinn Hughes, Ty Smith, and even Paul Coffey is on there. Uh, you know, the NHL order probabilities from hockeyprospecting.com in the 72nd percentile, that is very good. Even the star probabilities, the 55th percentile. Those are the two players that I think I'm really focusing on for the NHL draft for the Penguins. I'm Again, I'm going to have a big board coming up either later this week or early next week before the draft. But right now, I promised I would bring you all some draft content. Those are the two players I would circle right there in terms of, you know, who I would, you know, in, you know, in, in terms of who I would basically, you know, look to pick at 21. Um, we, we did see um, some moves today around the NHL. Well, one, one big one, uh, Kevin Fiala was traded from Minnesota to Los Angeles is going to sign a seven times 7.9 million dollar uh contract you know i thought the kings did well there they're, they're ready to go you know alex ali follow andre kopitar philip the victor arvidson drew dowdy still kicking when he's healthy their goaltending was good this year um quentin byfield is ready to go there um now you add kevin fiala you know that that team is they're gonna push i think for first in the pacific division next year in my opinion um you know they pushed the oilers to seven games they were even up three games to two on them uh, going into game six, and they couldn't close it out. Um, and that was a team that you know really couldn't score um, that, that as much in the playoffs as they did in the regular season. So, um, you know, I'm curious to see how they do next year. Rob Blake has done this right. I think he has more up his sleeve. They dealt from a position of strength, dealt one of their defensive prospects in a first rounder. They don't really care about that. They are in it to win it now. So that'll do it for this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I really appreciate all of you listening to this one. I'll be back with another episode on Thursday for you all. And then we'll have another one on Friday before going into the draft and all of the free agency stuff in the next couple of weeks. So look around for all that coming up soon. Again, thank you all so much for listening. Hope you all have a great rest of your evening. And I'll be back with you all on Thursday with a special crossover episode with Dan of Locked on Capitals, where, yes, we will discuss the potential of Danny Malkin going to Washington. So um, look for that and a whole bunch of Caps Pens rivalry talk for Thursday's episode.